Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, maximum score words formed by letters. If you think the title of this problem is bad, wait until you read the description. Um, I'm sorry, we're getting to the end of the month and quite frankly, I'm just kind of over it. So I'm not even gonna bother with this. I'll just kind of focus on an example. So the idea is we're given a list of words like this and we're also given a list of letters or characters that we can use to build these words. Now, this list could contain duplicates. So that kind of implies that once we use a character, for example, if we want to create Create the word good we use G we use uh, OO and we use this D over here so we've used those instances of those characters we do have a couple extra D's if we need so it looks like we can still form the word dad that's kind of the main idea behind this problem we're trying to build words given these characters and at some point we can kind of choose like obviously we have a limited number of characters so we can't build every single word in the description below they show one possibility is we create the word dad and dog. Another possibility is we create the word dad and good. And so what we want to do is return the maximum score that we can get from words that we can form. So it's our choice which words we want to form. And all we're trying to do is maximize that score. Now, how do we calculate that score? Well, it would be easy if each word had a score assigned to it, right? Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. Or is it? Think about this. The score of a word such as dog is determined by the score of each individual letter. So D has a particular score associated with it. So does O, so does G. Now those scores are given in the third parameter called the score array. Again, this would have been nice if they had just given us like a hash map and then we could just kind of map to it, but it's not going to be too difficult anyway. This is a hard problem after all. So the idea is that at the zero index over here, that maps to lowercase a, next one maps to lowercase b, et cetera, et cetera. So this one would be lowercase z. So we can get a mapping. So basically just kind of keep in mind that every single uh, character is gonna have a score assigned to it. So therefore we could compute the score of every single word if we wanted to. We could pre-compute them if we wanted to, or we could just compute them as we need to. You might think it's better to pre-compute them because then we don't have to keep computing them as we go. You might think that will lower the time complexity, but actually it's not going to because one thing that we definitely can't pre-compute is the way we're going to solve this problem. Basically, what I'm going to get at is that this solution is going to be a brute force backtracking solution. And for us to do that, the idea is going to be for every single word, such as dog and cat, we either choose to include that word or we choose to skip that word. So basically a simple decision tree with two choices every single time. The only catch is going to be that Sometimes we might not be able to form a certain word. For example, we can form the word dog. That's okay. We could also skip the word dog if we wanted to, but we can't really form the word cat. We don't have a single T in the input of letters. So can't form cat here and also can't form cat here either. How would we know that though? How do we know we can't form the word cat? Well, basically we would just check, do we have enough C characters that are available to us? Like in this thing, do we have enough A characters? Do we have enough T characters? And generally the easiest way to do that is going to be to take letters and convert it into a hash map so we can get the quantity of each character. So we know we have a few A's, a few D's, et cetera, et cetera. And then we're going to do the exact same thing for cat, this word. We're going to get the quantity or frequency of every single character. And then it'll be pretty easy for us just to check. Do we have enough C's? Do we have enough A's? Do we have enough T's? And of course we would determine that we do not. So we would not go down this path. Of course, for us to do that operation, we have to iterate over the current word, right? That's why I'm saying that pre-computing the score of each word is pretty useless because it's not going to change the overall time complexity. I mean, I guess it is slightly an optimization, but I'm personally not going to do it. 
it doesn't change like the big O complexity. This is obviously the decision tree. The only thing that we're gonna have to keep track of is of course the total score. Like we want to accumulate the score along every single path. Suppose here we end up choosing the word dad and then we skip the word dad and you know, I'm kind of running out of space here, but you can imagine that from here, we could also choose the word good we would find that this is the path that leads to the maximum. We'd find that there is another path down here that creates dad and dog, but the score from that's gonna be returned from this path and the score from this path, which one's the maximum? It's gonna be this one. So basically, this is a relatively textbook backtracking problem. One last thing that we are going to keep track of, obviously, when we use characters in this like set of letters, again, remember that we're going to convert this into a hash map of letters. So we have the frequency or quantity of each one of them. And as we do that, like as we create the word dog, we're going to update that hash map as we go so that we know we have fewer remaining characters. And then when we return from there, we're going to clean that up. We're going to clean up that hash map and say, okay, now we no longer are using the word dog and we are going down this path where we skipped the word dog. So we actually have all characters available to us. So just a bunch of bookkeeping to do in this problem, but otherwise it's nothing crazy. I think it'll make more sense when we get into the code. And I think I'll probably explain the time complexity when we get into the code as well, because obviously this is exponential to the power of n, but there is gonna be another factor here, mainly the length of each word, let's call that w. But yeah, let's get in the code now. So the first thing I'm gonna do is basically get the letter count. Like we don't want this to be in the form of a list. We want it to be in the form of a hash map. The easiest way in Python to do that is with counter. We could manually write it out, but it's a trivial piece of code. It's just gonna be looping over the characters and just counting the occurrences of each one of them. And that's exactly what counter does in Python. Now for the actual backtracking, let's create a helper function to do that. We'll call it backtrack. It's gonna be recursive. We're going to keep track of the current index that we're at. Of course, that's going to be the current word that we're at. And base case is pretty simple, right? We reach the end of that array. Therefore, there's no more words to choose from. Therefore, what's the score we can calculate from those remaining words? If there's none remaining, it's probably going to be zero, right? Okay. Now for the two cases, we usually start when we skip the word and then the other cases where we include the word when possible. We are not always going to be able to include every word. So just keep that in mind. First of all, when we skip, it's pretty easy. We're just going to go to the next index. We don't include a word, so there's no score added here. And we can just set this initially to our result. We're trying to maximize the result, remember? So we either can skip or we can include. We're not gonna total those up. We're gonna take the max of that and then we're going to return that. Okay, now how do we know if we can include the current word. Well, I'm actually going to create a helper function for that because it's otherwise gonna be a bunch of messy code. So I'm gonna call this helper function, can we form the current word, words at index i, given the current available letters? Can we do that? So I'm going to define this helper function up above here. So same name and same parameters. So given a word and given the letter count, let's see if we can form the word. First things first, let's call counter on the given word. Isn't Python such a beautiful language? We don't even have to write out that code. So now we have the word count, the occurrences of each character in that individual word. And now for every single character in that word, we want to know, does the count of that character ever exceed what is available to us. If it ever does, we can go ahead and return false because of course we know at that point we definitely cannot form that word. Now, if that never executes, then we know we can form that word. So pretty easy helper function here. And now within this if statement down here, what we ultimately want to do, the recursive call is ultimately gonna be this, call backtrack, on, you guessed it, i plus one. Okay, so uh, this looks the exact same as up above. So how is this any different? Well, first of all, we have to make sure to update letter count before we make this recursive call. We have to say this, for every single character in the input word, let's recommend the count of it, 
from letter count. So for this character, decrement that guy by one before we execute the recursive call. Now, after we execute the recursive call, we're no longer including that word. So we kind of want to reverse what we just did here. We want to reverse that. So we're going to copy and paste this and we're going to reverse it. We're just going to change the minus to a plus. Pretty easy, right? Just cleaning up the mess that we made earlier. Okay, but down here, we're forgetting something. First of all, of course, we want to maximize the result. So we want to say result is equal to this and the maximum of this down here. But we're still missing something, believe it or not. If we include a word, shouldn't that count towards our score? The way we've coded this up currently, the result is always going to be zero. We're not ever increasing the result from either of these. So here, I'm going to say get the score of the current word at index i and add that to the result of the recursive call and then compare this with the result take the maximum of those two and set it to the result over here that's all that we want to do so we're actually finished with this function now and i'm going to show you how we're going to call it down here we're going to call backtrack and starting at index zero of course and the only thing left for us to do is basically calculate the score of a given word. I'm pretty sure you can probably do that by yourself. But if you can't, I'll go ahead and show you defining get score given a word. So our result, which is the score of the word, of course, is what we're going to calculate and return. And to do that, we just want to go through every single character in the word because we know that every single character has an individual score. We can calculate that score by saying get the ASCII value of this character and subtract the ASCII value of lowercase a. So this will basically create a mapping. Lowercase a will map to zero, of course, right? Because if this was lowercase a, then it's going to be zero. Lowercase b has an ASCII value of one greater than this one. So that's going to map to one. And of course, z would map to 25. So basically, this is just a mapping. And then that will tell us the index to look at in the score array. Remember, this was given to us as a parameter up above. And then so that is just going to be added to the array result if I can type correctly and there you go this is the entire code unless I have a bug somewhere let's go ahead and run it and of course I had a bug and maybe you actually caught it so why would we compare account to a hash map I guess I was going too fast for my own good here we should have a little c and now let's run it as you can see on the left, it works. It seems to be pretty efficient. Let's actually talk about the time complexity for just a second. Obviously, like the backtracking, this is going to be called two to the power of n times, where let's say n is the length of the words array. But what exactly is happening inside of here? There's three things. We have a loop here that's looping over a word. We're looping over a word a second time. And then what's happening inside of this can form word? Looks like we are looping over the word a couple times. Now, it doesn't matter if we loop over the word three times, four times, or five times because that's a constant number. We're doing it a constant number of times. So really we're taking this and multiplying it by the length of a given word. Let's call that W. This is the overall time complexity. I'm not really considering the score here because that is of length 26. It doesn't really change the overall time complexity, but I am going to consider letters because we are creating a hash map out of that. So let's say this plus the length of letters where I guess let's just call that L because we're only really doing that a single time. Space complexity is going to be from recursion. It's going to be the length of words and also the length of the longest word. Actually, no, I think it would mainly just be uh, the length of words because, you know, the hash map we create here, it's not going to be larger than 26. We're not going to have more than 26 distinct characters. I guess it's going to be the length of the words input plus the length of the longest word because we are going to create a hash map for a given word. So I'll say the space complexity is going to be n plus w where n is the length of words and w is the length of the longest word or maybe the average word if you found this helpful consider checking out neatcode.io thanks for watching and i'll see you soon